Welcome to the Dream On Podcast. I'm Travis Gentry. I am the Julia Gentry. That's right. <laughs> Do you the, like it? Yeah, I like that. You are. <laughs> if you find her, if you look for her on your social media platforms, it's the the Julia Gentry. The Julia Gentry. And you can find me on the Travis Gentry. And I have no followers. <laughs> <laughs> As of yet. Just wait. Just wait. Once I once I open that up. And I start running. On Instagram. The minute that my husband starts doing stories, y'all, you know, <laughs> you know we're getting good. We're, we're getting something. Be my first friend. Be Check my it out. first friend. <laughs> Travis needs more friends on Instagram. Find him. Follow him. <laughs> Welcome to the 21st century. <laughs> totally. So if you're watching. We get to start with a question. Oh, okay. We get to start with a question. Today's my question. Today's my question. And if you haven't followed us at all on our podcast, we start with. Interesting questions to get just the juices flowing. And today it's my turn to ask the question. So my question to you is, if you could move anywhere, (laughs) where would you move and why? Oh man, so (laughs) many choices, so many options, so many places we've talked about. But I think the next move I would like to try is bitten. (laughs) Bentonville, Arkansas. I know, I know that totally comes out of like left field, <laughs> but that's that's where I'd like to go. Is Bentonville, Arkansas? If you haven't heard of it, look it up on a map. It's on the northwest corner. If you're looking at the map of Arkansas. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> you guys are gonna have to bear with us for just a second. It's real though. I mean, so so we all, everyone's like, what's so funny? Um, Well, what's funny is that we also have some really exciting news to share with you today. What? Be careful what you wish for. No. Yep. No. Yes. We're moving to Bentonville, Arkansas. I'm making your dreams come true. Oh man! You get Thank a dream, you, and you get a dream. Thank you, Jesus. Are you serious? I'm serious. When do we go? We're moving to Bentonville, Arkansas. When do we go, though? We go in two weeks. Depending on when you're listening to this, we might be there already. <laughs> <laughs> we might already be there. Are you serious? I'm serious. You know, Thank you, Jesus. I live to help my family's dreams come true, <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen. The Gentries are moving to Bentonville, Arkansas. That's right. That's right. And so today, actually, on the podcast, we are going to unpack not only this exciting news. <laughs> it just sounds funny, <laughs> like, so like, like already, saying it, you guys, like Bentonville, like, Arkansas. Here's like legitimately, Travis, I've only <laughs> told a handful of a handful of people. So uh, by the time that this airs, the world will know that we're moving. But here's what every single person <laughs> said to me. Oh uh, what? <laughs> you're going you're going from Bend, Oregon to Bentonville, Arkansas. I mean, I even had a text message from a friend that he said nobody has ever said that they're actually moving to Arkansas. That's exactly why I know we're on the right track. <laughs> That's exactly it confirms. <laughs> That's why we should go there. Exactly. But I've gotten the same thing. But like you know, Bentonville, Arkansas, when I'm changing utilities <laughs> and stuff, and they're like, Arkansas? <laughs> and you're like, I can just hear it in the tone. But here's the funny thing. So I said to this friend, he says, um, you're going to Bentonville, Arkansas. You're moving from Bend, Oregon to Bentonville, Arkansas. I said, yes. Reread your text. Yes, that's what I said. And he says, said nobody that's ever been. And I said, well, that's coming from the person who's never been. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, So what we're here to unpack on this episode today is one is is just what got us to this decision why we're actually moving to bentonville arkansas but i think we're gonna kind of like rethink this whole thing and the like these pattern interrupts that are so important in our lives that nobody is having even to the point that if you're watching this right now you're gonna go is julia sitting on the other side of the table of travis yes i am ladies and gentlemen we are doing hard things. We are doing hard things. We've even switched spots in the podcast room. <laughs> and that person who's like seeking consistency and certainty in this life, you were wigging you out because we're on this opposite side of the table. It does feel weird though. It does feel weird. But it's good. I like it. <laughs> I really like it. So, <laughs> so sorry. 
have to, you have to bear with Charles and I today. <laughs> So we're going we're gonna to talk about just pattern interrupts and why these are so important in our lives today. And we're going to use this as an opportunity to, to give you a front row seat into how we made this decision, why we're making this decision, and how you too can move to Bentonville, <laughs> Arkansas, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> so let's, let's back up just a little bit to give context for someone that's listening for the first time that don't know us, mm -hmm. don't know our story. So first of all, this is water, so we're not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Got the giggles. I actually do have a little kombucha in here. <laughs> so maybe a little caffeine so kicking actually, in. So actually, Travis and I are just high on life. We love life. So if you've actually never watched our podcast, this is, we really do love life. Um, we're just, we actually don't drink. So we don't drink. We're sober. <laughs> so if you want what we have, keep listening because we're going to give you some. hundred percent. Yes. Give context. So, um, so how I grew up is I lived in basically two houses that I remember growing up. One in, in Washington for about six years and the outside of uh, Seattle. And then the other one in Parker, Colorado mm -hmm. and for, until I graduated. And then my parents lived there probably three or four years after I graduated. So that's all I knew. That's that, that, those two homes. Mm -hmm. So you grew up. Tell us how you grew up. Uh, complete opposite. So I am now 37 years old and I've literally lived in 27 homes in those 37 years. But how many houses did you live in up until you graduated. Oh gosh, it'd take me too long to count. Cut it in half. So call it 14. 14, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So there again, the, the difference is, I think we turned out both fine. So it doesn't really matter if you live in one or two houses or 15 <laughs> by the time you're 18. So I just want to make that very clear. Yeah. But then after we got married and we lived in a house, we bought a house, we, we looked to settle down, live the American dream and realize that there's got to be more to life than just you know s settling down and living in one place the rest of our life. So we got the itch and we had it for many years to travel in an RV. Mm -hmm. So we've done that two different times now, one up to the Northeast, and then the second one was kind of Midwest up to the Northwest. Mm -hmm. And then we've lived um, from Florida now to Bend, Oregon, um, and Phoenix, Phoenix uh, Colorado. We did a six week VRBO kind of tour, tour. in 2020. Uh, or 2021, and we went to uh, Texas, um, Austin, Texas. We went to North Carolina. Um, we went to a couple different places in Florida, and um, we've also lived up in Milwaukee. Outside, I've lived outside of Chicago. You've lived in California. We've lived all over, East Coast to West Coast, but we've never lived in Arkansas. We've lived in Nashville, <laughs> but we just haven't lived in Arkansas. So. Um, with all that being said, like we, we love traveling, we love the experiences and we love the hard that it brings and the pattern interrupt. And I think that's kind of what you were saying. Yeah. So you can kind of elaborate on that, but just to give context, that is something that we love and we have been doing for quite some time. Right. And, and right out of the gate again, this, what this podcast in today is not about is it's not about trying to convince you to move, right? Like fill in the blank at some level. Um, but we wanted to give you an inside scoop as to like why we ultimately are making this decision and what it means to us, why Bentonville, why now, all of those pieces, because I think that it's really easy to look at people who are doing crazy things, brilliant things, out of the box things, right? Like again, fill in the blank as to what you might call this, but you don't really get to understand like the the pathway of how they made that decision and you and I talk all the time around we don't want to just learn another behavior or another skill set we are fascinated with the mindset of the people who are doing the things that are defying the limits mm -hmm. right at any level mentally emotionally spiritually <clears throat> so we wanted to kind of give you our framework of of why and how we got to this decision so when you come to that precipice in your life of of knowing you have to change right whether it feels like it's quote unquote happening to you or you just know that what got you to where you are isn't going to take you to where you've never been, that you recognize that one of the best things that we could do as people is create these pattern interrupts so we actually start doing something different to get a different result. Yep. And so this is just sharing and showcasing the who, what, where, when, how, how, and even not glamorous side of making the right kind of hard decisions. Yep. And you can follow Julia on the social media and we're going to start to showcase some of the things as we pack and move and, you know, as we get to the new place and, you know, uh, explore Vintonville. I've literally, me and Malachi have been there for two or three days, just passing through a couple years ago. And I have never been. And Julia's <laughs> never been there. My sister lives about three hours away. So in uh, Stillwater, um, 
And so we'll go visit her. But other than that, we, we don't have, like we haven't spent a ton of time there. Um, but that's one of the things, and I'm, we'll share kind of both of our perspectives because we do it for different reasons. Agreed. And we've talked through this a lot over the years of like, hey, I really want to do this and, and here's the reasons why I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And then you, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for you to be on board, yeah. um, to be honest. And, but once you are, then it's like, okay, I think you look at it and say, okay, what can I, how can I grow from this experience? Mm -hmm. And, and there again, when we've moved and sold everything and you give this story of like when we sold everything in Arizona and you had like 15 vases, <laughs> <laughs> literally 15 like flower vases, but it was interesting. That was a time where we, when we jumped in an A class RV and we traveled around full time, we sold pretty much everything besides what we could fit in like, a you know, a a four by six little um, U-Haul. Um, but everything else, as we were going through it, you look at it and it's like, some of them bring up memories, some of them don't, but you collect things over the years as though you need it <laughs> or you're gonna come back to it. Well, I, I remember the moment that, we actually have a picture of me with these 15 vases, but I came to you and went, do you think I should save one? <laughs> there was something in me that was like, Oh, I really need to like scratch this itch or figure out why do I have this like overwhelming desire to save a few of these and not tell Travis, you know, cause he's looking at me like, are you for real? Why? Like we're not saving any of them, let alone one. And why do you have 15 to begin with? And then there was something in my brain that was like, I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> I'm just going to keep one of them. Right. And, and so, yeah, I think, I think that initially my, right. My, my learned pattern, if I'm not careful, is to seek control. Mm -hmm. So I think even as we were at this why in the road of making this decision again, which we've been here before, which I do want to unpack a little bit because I mm -hmm. think it is really super fascinating. Um, but we've been at this why in the road before where we look at what we have again is is good. You know, like even being in Bend, we, we've loved Bend. It's mm -hmm. an incredible place to live. Like in theory, on paper, it checks There's nothing wrong all with the Bend. boxes, you know, and even in Florida, I had a lot of reasons to leave. <laughs> and at the same time, you're like, we live in Florida. It's warm. It's beautiful. Like there, it, like at some level, we're not running from something, which before I think we had some propensity to maybe run from some things. I don't like this. So we're going to go someplace new. But what was, what's been super fascinating to me this time around was my first initial wrestle as we started to unpack this conversation went back to all of those learned behaviors of control. Like I need to control my environment. I need to control the kid's schedule. I need to control where I'm working and how I'm doing videos. And like, and I could tell that I was like looping back mm -hmm. to, to needing some sort of control. And so I was approaching this decision from a place of control. And ultimately the way that, that, completely I, I learned to challenge that thought process was that's so boring to me you know like control is boring like I don't I love the challenge so I think we've talked about you love the adventure I like a good challenge I like something that's going to reveal me to me mm -hmm. which is so far out of the box of control mm -hmm. and so it was almost like I had to look at myself in the mirror and go do I either want to make a decision in control, which is going to bring total boredom. It's going to set, shut my soul down, which I was noticing, mm -hmm. or I'm going to lean in and I'm going to pick something that challenges me and it's going to bring out the very best in me. And it's going to be hard and it's going to reveal the awkward, but I'm going to feel alive doing it. Mm -hmm. And that, that to me was kind of, all right, well, there's my two choices. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a few things come to mind, like in this move, like you said, there's not, we love Bend, Oregon. And we could be back someday. Like we, we, we don't know. We hold it loosely and we do feel like our calling right now is to be on the road and to live in different places. It's given us the opportunity to meet so many great people. Um, and that's part of it as well. Um, you've planted seeds with the book and going to different churches and, and getting a part, uh, being a part of different communities and with the kids too. Um, but it's also helped our communication. Um, specifically this move that I see mm -hmm. with Malachi, our oldest son, it's, it, it has been harder on him um, to make this transition, which has given us the opportunity to really communicate to him um, about why we're doing it, the intention behind it, um, and, and become closer so he can share his emotions. Because mm -hmm. I think 
you know, a lot of times it's just when you move or you have this big transition in a family, it's just, it is what it is. Like we're choosing this. We don't have to move. Um, we're choosing this for a specific reason. And so we get to break that down to our kids of why we're doing this and make it as fun as possible and meeting new people and mm -hmm. trying new things. Cause every place that we've gone, they've made some good friends mm -hmm. and they've got the opportunity to get involved in a few activities that they really enjoy. And so I believe it's actually helped our communication and our family in general. Which is so funny because even if we're talking about the theme of right these pattern interrupts and why they're so important is I think that when we actually do a pattern interrupt, as simple as sitting on the opposite side of the table or moving mm -hmm. across the country or changing a career or quitting your job to start a new business or anything like that, I think what most of us fear is the hard the hard conversation or right, the, the conflict or whatever it is. And I think number one, I think the magic that we're wanting is in the work that we're avoiding. There's that. And then I also think that for me, what's changed dramatically or even that moment with Malachi as he's sitting there, I mean, really having an emotional time about this was hard in my book now is always an opportunity for connection, mm -hmm. right? Like that's what a, a heart is because you might cry, you might get mad at me, you might not like what I'm doing, but in that is a moment to go, oh, now I can, I know you better. You know, like I actually get to see into your heart. I get to be a part of your process. I get to kind of actually get closer to you and develop a more intimate relationship with you because I get to see what's going on as opposed to most of us are like trying to people please or trying to accommodate or, you know, trying to change how someone else is feeling. But mm -hmm. if I do that, I'm missing the opportunity for intimacy. And so what's been fascinating as I look at our family in this decision is I've gotten to know me more in making this decision. I feel like I've gotten to know you more in making this decision together. We got to know Malachi more, right? Like, mm -hmm. and so I just think that what we're actually wanting is in the work that we're avoiding because I want connection here. It was. Mm -hmm. You know, like I want, <clears throat> I want to be the best version of me. Here it is. Yeah. You know, like it, so that was super fascinating. And it's me. also looking at and helping him. And I, I've had this realization too, listening to a, a few different people and reading some stuff over the last like week or two is like in any situation, find the, find the one thing that's good. Mm -hmm. Find the t two things that are good about it. Yes, there's going to be some hard things or bad things about it, but look at, in that moment, what is good? Not only now, but what? why are you doing it that will be better in the future? Yeah. And so I think for me in that communication, now he's excited. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's through having that conversation and hearing his heart and, and the emotion behind it, now we get to look at and point about all the things that good that has happened here, but also all the good things that are gonna happen as we move forward. Yeah. And it's really been cool. Now he's excited. Like, when are we going? And we're going to do this. And we're going to stop at my parents' house for a couple of days. So he gets to see, you know, his aunts and uncles mm -hmm. and grandparents for a couple of days. So to me, that's been really awesome to be able to, coming back to the communication, is build that relationship stronger. So as our kids go through things, no, it's okay to cry. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be excited. And I want to know what's behind it. Well, and it was interesting because even as he was crying at the table and we were like, hey, but you said, hey, buddy, do you know, do you want to put some words behind that? A nine-year-old, he goes, dad, I, I just need to process for a second. I'm just, I just need to process, it, you know, internally for a second. And you're like, that's it. I mean, that is, <clears throat> in my mind as, as a parent is, is a win when your kid even just knows how to have the words to go. I just got to, I just got to process, you know, with myself for just mm -hmm. a second. Mm -hmm. which I think is huge. You know, I don't know that we do that enough as parents is like really create the space for our kids just to process or to teach them that that's part of the journey of finding your words and putting a name to the emotion. And like, that's huge. Yeah. I think what I've seen in society is that we, we tend to coddle our kids too much and that's not how the world works. And that's not ultimately, I believe where the world's going. Mm -hmm. I think that there's more division and more, all the things that are happening over the last couple of years, I unfortunately don't see it getting better. So I also think it's equipping our kids to be able to handle situations no matter what, yeah. because there are good things that are happening, but there's a lot of things that are not good um, that you have to be able to understand at the root of it, mm -hmm. not just the surface. Yeah. Cause a lot of people can say, well, I don't like that. And I'm mad about it. Well, why don't, why don't you, yeah. what does it mean? You yeah. know, like I want, and that's what we've done with our kids to be able to break that down, 
to really get to the root of it, mm -hmm. not just the surfacey, but also to learn how to deal with it and not turn to just anger yeah. or not turn to as they get older drugs or alcohol or something that is going to disconnect them from actually dealing with the root of it. So talk to me, us, this whole dreamer community about what was your biggest reasons for this pattern interrupt? So for me, I love, I love adventure. I love seeing new places. And so looking at, and we were, we were going back and forth between Austin, Texas. And so I was looking at it and we, me and Malachi spent a couple days there on our way actually from Florida up to Bend about a year and a half ago. And they actually have a ton of mountain biking. That's something I really want to do um, while I still can. And they actually have like, they're one of the top places to go mountain biking. Mm -hmm. They have some different lakes. Um, and within a four to six hour radius, there's a lot to explore and see and do from hiking to mountain biking to, to, to the lakes. Um, my sister's gonna be about three hours away. So it'd be kind of fun to be able to connect with them, you know, hopefully like once a month. So I think for, and we just look at this for us is a year. Like we're going here for a year and that's kind of what we did with coming, moving to Bend. Mm -hmm. We're moving to Bend, we're gonna be here for a year and let's just be here and do it the best that we can. And that's really our mantra as we go to Bentonville, Arkansas is we're going there for a year. And if we absolutely fall in love with it, we're gonna stay there mm -hmm. longer. We'll probably buy a house with maybe some acreage or something. Um, Cause ideally that's what we wanna do. We wanna have a home base. We wanna have a little bit of space, but right now it's going there for one year and just doing it the best that we possibly can. Mm -hmm. Meeting people, going to new churches, going on adventures, teaching our kids, you know, the you know, real world of the different places throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And they actually get to live there from Florida now to Bend, now to the, the you know, the middle of the country. Mm -hmm. And they get to see all these different places and meet the different people and the food and because it is different. Mm -hmm. It's very different. We're and, not we're not from around <laughs> here anymore. And, and there's and there's a spirit and the energy in yeah. every place that you go. Yeah. And I also think that that's we're pretty keen on that when we go to some place, but it's also not to just avoid, well, I don't want to go to this place. And I couldn't tell you the energy or anything in Bentonville, Arkansas, mm -hmm. but I know as we've traveled and we have lived in Nashville and we actually lived in Boise. And so we've lived all over the places and you pick up this energy. And, and so I think it's also to challenge ourselves, um, in, in that way as well of, you know, being out of our comfort zone. We don't know anybody else. The closest person we have is my sister. But other than that, we know no one. Yeah. And so it challenges both of us to step out of our comfort zone. It challenges our kids to, to help them and to connect with new people. Our kids for being homeschooled, I think are some of the best communicators because we, we do put them in situations that, that force them to be able to communicate, use their words, share their emotions, step out and meet new people. Yeah. Well, and it's so interesting because even as I'm hearing you say that, I think that how I would suggest someone approach this whole idea of pattern interrupt is like one of two places. Either A, you're stuck. You know, like you just are like, I keep trying to do this in any area of your life. You know, I'm, I'm trying to level up my career or I want deeper connection in my marriage or my house is a mess and I can never get it fixed or I can never seem to lose the weight. Like whenever you like officially feel like on paper you're stuck, you need a pattern interrupt. And then also to ensure that you are congruent with your values, you mm -hmm. also need to be doing pattern interrupts. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because as I'm, I'm thinking through how we got here, I think that this was a huge play for you of really staying true to our family values, you know, ownership, faith, creativity, adventure, you know, but all of those are so important that I watched you personally <laughs> make this decision 100% in alignment with our values. And mm -hmm. not that again, we couldn't do that here in Bend. You can't, we can, right? It's not that I have to go out there yep. to do it, but it was like, what is gonna be the most uh, fullest expression of all of these values coming to life? Mm -hmm. And I saw, I saw you do that really well because it was all through the lens of our values. Yep. For me, I almost started to come at it from, oh, I am getting kind of stuck. Right? I noticed that my energy was starting to tank. I did, wasn't doing anything different. I noticed that my mindset, my heart set, the way that I was showing up, 
like kind of backing down, you know, and, and it wasn't until the day that thank God I have a husband who's discerning. You guys literally this day marked me for life. I'm sitting there at 5 a.m. in the morning doing the woe is me in my journal because I do that sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> I pray no one reads my journal so they think I'm crazy. Um, but Trav sits down and he looks at me at like five, at this time, 5, 11 in the morning. And he was like, when are we, when are you going to let the world really see you? And I was like, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> you know, I'm like, you go, when are you really going to shine? And then you just started to affirm me. I don't know where it came from, but you started to affirm. I love your bold. I love your willingness. I love your message. Like, I just love who you are. And you didn't say much more and you walked upstairs. <laughs> he like drops a bomb at 530 in the morning. And it was truly, it felt like when someone finally speaks truth to your soul, like when someone finally sees your potential and just speaks directly to the core of that and you realize that I'm hiding behind this stuck mm -hmm. and, and, and my control, it felt like I took a deep breath and went, oh my gosh, like I could breathe again. Yeah. And so I think that's when I was like, pattern interrupt, here we go, <clears throat> I'm all in. And from the moment that we made the decision, it's honestly felt like, every quote unquote stuck has just dissipated. Mm -hmm. I mean, my energy's back up, my mindset's back up, my heart sets back up, right? Like my ability to get things done and to be present is totally back up. Like I feel like I'm alive again. Yeah. And so that's why, again, I'm a huge proponent of like what we're wanting, that high, that feeling alive for life is actually behind the work that we're avoiding. Yeah. And it's so easy. A couple of thoughts come to mind. Like when we were more traveling in the RV, we got that a lot when we'd run into people, local people, and they're like, oh, I wish I could do that, or you're so lucky, or whatever. And there again, the effort and energy, we talked about it on a different podcast, it was years in the making to get to that point. Just like it is years in the making to get it to this point where we are both self-employed, we homeschool, we have, we've created intentionally the flexibility for us to do this. Yeah. This isn't by chance. And so, there again, looking at your own life, where is it? What are you holding on to that is not allowing you to get ahead or get to where you want to go or fully expressing and stepping into your dreams? Mm -hmm. And that could be as small as, you know, your house, like going through your house. What do you have in there? What are you hoarding? What are you thinking and, and stacking because it makes you feel secure? You know, whether it's the garage or the basement or a storage facility, like it's hilarious to me that so many people have storage facilities mm -hmm. that they don't go into. And I've known a couple people, they don't touch them for years, yeah. but they still have them yeah. as though like they, they know that they have that. It's something to control. Totally. I have this stuff. It's mine. I'm going to put it here because it makes them feel whatever. Totally. And so... I challenge and encourage anybody, it's not just about moving. That's not what it is. We're, we're, we're having fun and we love this and because we're excited to. And, and the challenge that I put on Jul Julia last, last week, yeah, right? A couple weeks ago, yeah. A couple weeks ago is all of the work that we've put into and Julia writing this book is, is a huge feat in itself and the workbook and everything and the community that she's built now and the team that she's, she has it's really time to showcase all of that to really help and set people free mm -hmm. to live that out. And it's, we are doers. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you what we're doing. It may not be exactly what you want to do. You may not want to move. You may love where you're at. Great. But what other area do you need to step out where you're living comfortable and it's prohibiting you from living your dream? Yeah. And, and this is how we're doing it and we're going to show it and we're going to showcase it. And that's what our community is about too Yeah. on the Facebook group is that it's all about that other people and you can get, oh, I like that. I've never thought about that. And then you start to get these ideas and dreams. I think sometimes when you put yourself out there, it's just taking that first step. You don't know where you're going or what you're doing, but then a, a conversation with someone or a post or you read something or listen to a podcast and you're like, oh, wow, like I, 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 I want to try this or I want to do this. And then it leads you to the next step and the next step and the next step. And that's what the community is all about. Well, so I do want to plug and point people to the community because that's what we're all about is helping people live out whatever that dream is, mm -hmm. wherever you feel stuck, go get involved. Dreamers.community for really there. Go to dreamers.community for all that information. But what's funny that you said that though is I think you're right. I think we have a propensity to hold on. 
right? I think that that is the bottom of Maslow's <clears throat> hierarchy, like scarcity mindset, and it's super fair. Like on paper, I think anyone, right? If you're in a uh, in an environment that you feel scarce and there's not enough resources, not enough time, not enough people, not enough money, all the things, you're there long enough, and you actually start to look at the world that way, right? Mm -hmm. So the next the next unconscious tendency is to hold on. And I remember even the pastor at Eastmont here in Ben said a couple weeks ago, like, what's interesting about our desire to hold on is that God has actually implanted uh, eternity on the inside of all of us. And so we actually, that, that idea of going, gosh, is there something more, right? And then we scramble for something, work, addiction, alcohol, mm -hmm. hoarding, anything like we're, we're trying to fill it because we're like, is there something? So we're trying to fill that soul bucket with something. And he basically is like, no, what that is is a desire for heaven. Your, your desire eternity, something even bigger than you. And so our job here on this earth is not to be holding on to all of these things that aren't ours to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is, again, so fascinating. Back to the vases or leaving Ben, the place that we love, or going on to the next is that to me it also feels a little bit like this continual sacrifice we just choose a house and moving. You call it whatever you want, but is a, I won't, this won't be my idol. Like I won't hold on to this mm -hmm. so much. I don't want my <clears throat> fingerprints on this. And I think that that's also awoken something in me, which has been interesting because then it's getting me like more convicted by being an incredible wife and an incredible mom and serving the gift even more is when I finally let go of all of it. I actually feel like my heart started beating even more for all of it. Mm -hmm. So it's like this really weird thing that's almost like, I feel like if I hold onto it and squeeze the life out of it, then I'm going to feel alive. But I feel like mm -hmm. all God is doing is let go and you take a deep breath and it's like you feel your heart beat again. Living like in that flow state, yeah. not holding and like being like clenching your mm -hmm. fist. And, and we even talk about it like with our kids and the mind thing. And in their room, like this is my room. And you're like, no, it's not your room. It's actually, you're a steward of this space, this room that we're in right now, but it's not yours. Mm -hmm. Because one, we don't own this house. And even if we did own this house, once we sell or we move, someone else is gonna be here. So that's our job on in this world is just be a steward of whatever we have in front of us. I love it. I love it. And it's so funny because I don't think we're looking at that like that. I think that, again, we're looking at things either to control or it's like this perpetual perfectionism, <laughs> you know, like I want it to all look the right way and be the right way because it has something to do with me because my identity is at stake in all the things. And mm -hmm. so I'm clinging on to it because if my kids act out, <clears throat> it's a byproduct of who I am. And if my, my business isn't successful, then it means something about me. And if this, then me, and if this, then me. And so we're in this kind of like selfish mindset that we didn't even know. And I think that it's just an opportunity to say, let go, take a deep breath, let your heart beat again, mm -hmm. and actually care more about less. And I'll say that again, because somebody needs to hear that. It's about caring more about less, which is something I don't think we're doing. I think we care about way too many things and we're not focused on the thing. So for me, if we could come full circle around how I finally took this jump again to go to Bentonville, Arkansas, a place I've never been, <laughs> you know, like with all the opinions. It's because I will be there. It's because my husband's going to be there. I just want to fulfill my husband's dreams, you guys. It's all I want to do. But again, like you have to know that even opinions and biases, people are like, whoa, what's in Arkansas? You're like, well, have you ever been? No. So really, all the narrative that you have is a story from some sort of opinion, from enough Google searches that gives me no raw data, like facts, it's mm -hmm. just opinion, you know? But I think is that I started asking myself, okay, in this next chapter, if I was actually turning the chapter in our lives, I want the title to read Creative Expression. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, where would the most creative expression come from? And ultimately it was like, well, go to a place I've never been, trust the process, do my best wholeheartedly, have some fun, try something new, trust Travis, all right, Bentonville, Arkansas. <laughs> you know, it's like... and they're, yeah, totally. And, and, and they're coming back to what we, I had said in the middle of the podcast is whatever we're going to do, we're going to do it the best. Mm -hmm. So if it's Bentonville, Arkansas, and there again, like you, you had said, it is interesting. Think about when you tell someone that you're going to do something and they give you feedback on it, ask them if they've ever done it or they've been there. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they haven't, or they've had one experience or someone told someone and they're like, 
so that's how they get their truth or and that they like to share with everybody but they've actually <laughs> never actually done it totally. and so obviously I've been there and I think it's a place that it'll give us an opportunity within four to six hours to explore there's new 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 churches that we can connect with um, and ultimately like we get to share and show our family and our kids a, a new place like just, I think just a different way to do life you know and and I who knows we at some level Travis and I recognize that of our five kids we're probably going to have one that plants himself as an adult and never moves ever you know and we'll have some that'll have the creative bug and that's not what to, to my earlier point like we're not holding on to that I think all mm -hmm. we're here to do is to continue to instill this mindset and value system in our kids that don't hold on to things too tightly that we do the hard well Right, that we continue to communicate, that we live our lives heart open, trusting God, you know, chasing after the dreams that are on the inside of us. And now as a community, we want to encourage you to do the same. And so really we wanted to share this fun, exciting news about our move. We're going to encourage you to watch on our YouTube channel because we will be posting tons of videos and the journey along the way. But more than anything is we just want to encourage you to look at your life and to find a few pattern interrupts that are probably way past due. Right? If, if your marriage feels stuck, if you feel stuck in your health and, and fitness, if your financial situation feels stuck, if your career, heck, even in your church, maybe it feels like, man, we're just stuck. It's probably a time to have a pattern interrupt and to do something different so you can get a different result. 100%. Les Brown says you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. And I think for some of us, in, in all contexts of what you just said, I think sometimes it is nice to go look and seek and experience new things to, to see what you're missing or what you're not missing. Totally. And if you don't believe Les Brown, then watch The Greatest Showman, which says that comfort is the enemy of progress. So there's that one too. Yeah, two options. Two options. <laughs> you choose. <laughs> but as always, we thank you for joining us on another episode of the Dream On podcast.